Hello everyone. All right, so the next program in chapter seven is low tree number generator. All right, so design a program that generates a seven digit low tree number. The program should generate seven random numbers, each in the range of zero through nine, and assign each number to a list element. Random numbers were discussed in chapter five, um, in chapter five. Then write another loop that displays the contents of the list. Okay, so let's start. All right, so I want us to break our program into functions. And so uh, the first function I want us to create is a function that's going to generate one random number, just one random number. So let's go ahead and define it. So oops, I'm going to define it, I'm going to call it generate random number, just a single random number. We have to de determine if this function is going to accept any argument so we can define parameters. But no, uh, all we want this function to do is to uh, generate one random number and then return it. And so before we can generate random numbers, we need to import the random module, which is basically a file that contains all the functions related to generating random numbers. And so I'm going to import random at the top here. So this is the file that contains all the functions related to, uh, related to generating random numbers. <coughs> all right, so in this function, the first thing I want to do is call one of the functions or use one of the functions in there. And before I call one of the functions, I need to refer to the name of the file. So it's going to be random dot. I'm using the dot to access one of the functions. So it's, a, it's, a, it's an access operator or the dot operator. The name of the function I want to access is randint, which stands for random integer. So random dot randint um, takes in a couple of arguments, first of all. I'm going to specify the start point and then Oh, sorry, the start point and then the end point. All right, so in the question over here, it said the program should generate seven random numbers, each in the range of zero through nine. So I'm going to type in zero for the start point and then nine for the end point. <coughs> sorry, I still have my cough. <coughs> sorry. So random the rand int passing in zero and nine will generate a random integer in the range of zero to nine. So basically, zero to nine is included. So this, num this function call can return zero as part of it, you know, generating a number. Or it can also return nine, it can return two, it can return five, it can return zero or nine. And so please uh, keep in notes that zero and nine are included. Now once it generates a random number in the range of zero through nine, it's going to return it. Now when it's returning it, we need a place to start. So I'm going to create a variable and I'm going to call it random number. So random number, this variable is going to receive whatever number the random.randint method returned. And once we have the random number, let's go ahead and return it to whatever statement called this function. So return random number. And we're done with this function. Okay, so the next function I want us to, uh, to create is a function that's going to generate uh, the lottery numbers, right? We're supposed to generate seven random numbers, seven one random numbers to represent the lottery numbers. So I'm going to define a function, I'm going to call it generate lottery numbers. We need to, again, determine if this function is going to accept any argument. And um, yes, right, if we're generating, generating lottery numbers, we need to know how many lottery numbers uh, we want to generate. <coughs> Sorry, so as an, uh, I'm going to define a parameter, and this, this parameter is going to be basically um, how many uh, n lottery numbers we, we want to generate. So I'm going to call it number of lottery numbers. Okay, so anytime someone calls this function, they need to pass in a number of lottery numbers. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a loop, a for loop, to iterate this many times. So if the user types in seven, I want to iterate seven times. If the data types in eight, I want to iterate eight times, so on and so forth. So I'm going to create a target variable here, so four. I'm going to create a target variable, and this target variable, I normally call um, call it an index, right? Um, and you want you understand it moving forward. So I'm going to name it number, uh, so let's see. I'll call it lottery number index. Actually, let's even add current. I like to, I like to, you know, start with current just so I, because that this 
variable will contain a different number each time the loop iterates, so I like to call it current lottery lottery number index. All right, so for current lottery number index in range, I'm going to pass in whatever the user typed here. All right, so I've passed in the, let's say, assuming the user types in seven. <coughs> I'm going to use this just to explain. Assuming the user types in seven, this range function here is going to, it's going to, you know, basically generate an what's called an iterable, some basically a, a sequence from zero to six. Okay, so basically the first time the loop iterates, current lottery number is going, so current lottery number index is going to hold the number zero. The next time it iterates, it's going to hold the number one, all the way to six. Now seven is not included. Seven is like the ending limit, but it's not included. So when I type in here. Um, four, for example, it's going to iterate, um, iterate starting from the number zero. It fits, it's going to iterate four times, all right. But it's the, but the, but then this current lottery number index is going to hold numbers from zero all the way to three. Four is not included. Four is like the ending limit, but it's not included. So keep that in note. So when I use the types in seven, for example, for a number of lottery numbers, and I paste in seven, seven here, it's going to iterate seven times: zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. When you count that, you, when you count 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, you have 7 items. But then this current literature number index is going to hold the, you know, the numbers from 0 to 6. Now, you can use it in your, in your loop to, uh, to do, to do you know, multiple, you know, multiple things, right? But um, for now, what we want to do is, let's see, <coughs> each time, sorry, my cough is really, really uh, I know, anyway. Each time, what we want to do is we want to generate a random number. But over here, the question said the program should generate seven random numbers, each in a range of zero through nine, and assign each number to a list element. So we need a list here so we can assign, you know, the random number to it once we generate it. So I'm going to call this lottery numbers. It's going to be I'm going to basically declare a list, an empty list here. Each time we iterate, we want to generate a random number. And we already have a function here. <coughs> we have a function here. Our functions are accessible to each other. Okay, so we have a function here that generates a random number. So we can call it. I'm going to call generates random number here. Generates random number, and I'm going to uh, close the parentheses. <coughs> Sorry, I need to drink some water. All right, so we know that generates random number here returns a random number. When it returns a random number, we need a place to store it. So initially, I'm going to create a variable just so it's clear. I'm going to create a variable. I'm going to call it random number. And random number is going to store whatever random number that generates random number function returns. Now, it doesn't matter, you know, this random number name is the same as this. These functions are different. The scope of this random number variable is within this generate lottery numbers functions, a function. And then the scope of this random number variable is within this generate random number uh, function. They are like twins, but you know, they don't see each other. You know, they are considered different if they are in different functions. So I'm going to store the random number over here in this variable. And I'm going to append it to this list. So lottery numbers dot append. What do, I, what do I want to append to this list? I want to append the random number we just generated. We append that. And then we iterate again. We iterate again, we generate another random number, we append it to the list. So by the time this loop is done, if we type in seven here for the number of lottery numbers, it's going to iterate seven times. And each time it's going to generate a random number and append it to the list. Basically, we'll have a list that contains all, you know, our random numbers. And once we're done with our loop outside of the loop, what we want to do is return this list. So return lottery numbers. All right, so that's what this function does. It generates uh, the random numbers are, touch, um, are panted to the list and it returns the list. All right, the next thing I want us to do is create a function that's going to print out the, the numbers in the list. Because over here it said, uh, then write another loop that displays the content of the list. I wanted us to create, uh, break our program into functions. So let's do that. I'm going to define another function 
that's going to print lottery numbers. So let's, I'm going to call it print lottery numbers. If it's going to print out lottery numbers, then we need to give it a list that contains lottery numbers, which we have, we have, we will have. Whoever is calling this function has to pass in a list that contains numbers, um, basically lotto numbers. And so I'm going to define a list here, and I'm going to call it lottery numbers. Again, um, <coughs> sorry. I'm going to define a parameter here, which is basically going to be hold a list. It's it's a placeholder for a list. Um, and again, it doesn't matter if this lottery numbers name <coughs> is the same as this lottery numbers variable. Again, because they are considered because they are in two different functions, the the scope of them, the scope of this one, for example, is within this function, and the scope of this is within within this function. All right. So, in this function, what we want to do is basically loop through this list and display each number stored in it. All right, so I like to use indexing to access the elements in the list. You can also use other ways to do that, but I like to use indexing just because you have more control. So again, I'm going to create a for loop. I'm going to create a target variable. The target variable is going to represent my the index that I want to use to access elements from this list. So again, I'm going to call this current lottery number index. Again, it doesn't matter. They have the same name. They're considered different because they're in two different functions. So for current lottery number index in range, I want to specify a range. And the range is going to be the length of this list, uh, this, this list item. So if the user passes in, for example, a list that contains seven items, basically length length of the lottery numbers for example if the list contains seven items length of that lottery numbers will be seven so i'm going to just use it to explain so if the user passes in a list that contains seven numbers it will be like this and this will basically i trade seven times but each but, uh, but then it's going to start assigning numbers to lo uh, lottery, current lottery number index each iteration the first iteration is going to store zero second iteration is going to store one all the way to six now remember seven is the ending limit but it's not included in, you know, in the numbers, in, it's not included in the numbers that are assigned to current literal number index. It, I trade seven times a ride because if you count from zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, you have seven items. Okay, if you if you start counting zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, you have seven items. But then the last index, oops, let me just disable this. The last index will be six. Seven is not included. It's like the ending limit not included. All right, basically, it will be zero. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right. If you counted them, you have seven items. Zero, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right. And these are the numbers that will be assigned to current literal number index each iteration, starting from zero all the way to six. And we can use these numbers to access the elements in the array. Okay. These numbers will, will be their in, their indices or their indexes to access the elements in the array. All right, so what we want to pass in the range function is the length of the lottery numbers list that the user is going to pass. Whoever calls this function is going to pass. And each time you want to use the current lottery number index okay, to access that particular element from the list, all we want to do is just print it out. We want to print it out because that's what the function is supposed to do, print the lottery numbers. So each time you want to print out and we can <coughs> access the particular element of the list by using the list name and in square bracket, passing in the index of the number we want to display. So the number will be the current lottery number index. It will change because it will be assigned numbers from zero to six. So the current lottery number index, we want to print it out. Now by default, when a print function prints out whatever you tell it to print, it's going to end it with a new line so it prints it out, it moves the position to the next line, and anything that follows whatever you just printed is going to follow from, the, from that current line going. Uh, we don't necessarily want that, but let's just leave it so we can have a good picture of how and how it looks. Okay.